Hello friends. So it's me Varun. So in the previous few sessions, we have understood an in-depth mathematical analysis of how I should not say mathematical. It should be a graphical analysis of how you get the load characteristics from the OCC and the RF line for a DC shunt generator. So you found out that the graph was like this. It is a double-valued function graph. Why it's double-valued? Because if you select a particular value of IA here, so what would happen? You are having two values of VT. So one is this value. And one is corresponding to this value, so it's a double-valued function. So we have done all the graphical analysis. So I thought that let us uh, spend a little bit of time summarizing this particular graph. All right. So we will be looking at it in a machine's perspective. Why the uh, graph is turning around like this? So if you see this OCC, all right. Now you know that EA is equal to K phi omega. Okay. That means EA and uh, phi are linear relation their relationship between these two are linear therefore i can plot this as flux as well so the flux also will have the same characteristics of course the value might be different but it will follow the same path because if depends on flux and flux depends on ea so everything is interconnected here okay now if you see this particular graph there are two main regions for this graph okay so one is this particular region which i am highlighting here okay <coughs> that is a linear variation so the flux and the ea the armature em mm <coughs> armature uh, voltage varies linearly with respect to if in this particular region here all right so let me call this particular region as the linear region okay beyond that now what is linear region with any variation is if the flux will vary okay so for example let me take two values of if here one for this particular value and one for this particular value here okay so that means if i just make a small thing here like this so the delta phi okay or the delta e will be significant okay in this particular linear area but once you come here in this particular area after this particular point i will tell you what this point is called after this particular point you see that the graph is not linear anymore if you would have been linear it would have continued like this all right so here it is approaching the saturation the machine is not able to generate much flux now because the saturation has occurred so the comparatively for the same value of uh, change in if here for example approximately let me take the same value of if change here around this much all right the delta e or the delta flux in this saturation area let me call it as s is less okay that means this is the one thing which i want to tell here delta e saturation or the delta flux saturation is always less than delta e in the linear area or delta flux in the linear area so this you have to understand uh, in the onset all right so there uh, this particular point here where the linearity is ending is called the knee point this area is called the knee point now why it is called the knee point is because for example this graph shape the black one actually looks like a leg right so if this is the leg here so this is the knee and this is the rest of the portion of the leg and this is your foot here so if you put the bones here like this it looks something like this so this is a linear area and this is the saturation area and that is why this particular point the knee is the junction right between your thigh and your rest of the leg so that is why this particular point is called the knee point all right so now let us uh, just rub this particular diagram here. I don't want to distract you much. All right. Okay. So now how did we draw the terminal characteristics? You started from the open circuit condition, which I've written here. Then you loaded the generator, you connected the load and you gradually demanded more and more current. And as a extreme condition, you also short circuited. All right. So that is how you got this particular graph here so now let us see what all we can understand from this particular graph okay now you know that vt is equal to ea minus iara okay now for example i am increasing the value of ia okay i am increasing the value of ia so what all would happen let us see here let ia increases what would happen the iara drop would increase right iara drop would increase and because IARA drop is increasing, the VT would reduce. Okay. Another thing is that IF is equal to VT divided by RF. All right. So if VT decreases, 
the if value also should decrease right vt decreases if value should also decrease but look at in this saturation area any change in field current does not reflect much change in the flux or the emf okay that means in the saturation area as you can see in the saturation area the delta e or the delta flux is not much therefore in the saturation area we can keep this ea as constant almost a constant value it's not changing much therefore in the saturation area we are only considering the iara drop that means this particular drop which you are seeing in the terminal characteristics vt is dropping this drop is mainly due to mainly due to iara mainly due to there will be a little bit of uh, contribution from the reduction in vt also and if decrease and ea also decreases that is clear from this graph but the machine almost operates a uh, well beyond this particular point here all right so we can say that this is mainly due to the iara drop okay now as you continuously increase and increase and increase you reach this particular point which is corresponding to the knee point here and at this point you are having maximum amount of armature current i told you that is the point till which you can load the generator okay il you can load the generator and ia would increase correspondingly okay now at this particular point you are approaching the linear area of the graph so you have reduced the value of vt and ea and you have come here now you are approaching the linear point of the graph now let us see what will happen same thing you are trying to increase the value of il right you are trying to increase the value of il and uh, you expect that ia would increase but what happens here actually the vt has reduced so much all right the vt has reduced so much see the vt has reduced so much and vt is the source of if also see vt so you can see from this relation vt is the source of if vt is the source of if mathematically so vt also has reduced considerably so if you are trying to load the generator and vt is falling if would decrease that is all clear but if is now decreasing in the linear region okay and in the linear region the delta e and delta flux are significant okay so this happens in the saturation area and in the linear region what happens when you try to load the generator vt decreases if decreases and flux decreases and ea which is the source of the generator okay ea is the source right everything comes out from the generator ea is the mother of the all voltages here now so ea itself is reducing okay ea itself is reducing and what is this ia value equal to the ia value here is equal to ea minus vt divided by ra so what is happening now you are trying to load the generator vt itself is reducing and along with that it is reducing ea also so what will happen to the effective value of ia okay what will happen it will come down it will come down and uh, actually the graph will start shifting as you try to load the generator rather than continuing to increase after the maximum point that is the knee point it would decrease actually so this is the process of loading the generator so here you start with occ open circuit and then finally as you know that as you have understood that ia is decreasing because of the reduction in ea significant reduction in ea so what would happen as a final extreme point in the short circuit condition we already found that that vt equal to 0 so this is the vt equal to 0 line and what will be the vt equal to 0 means what will be the if value here vt equal to 0 if value also will be equal to 0 so you are in this point of the graph now okay at if equal to 0 what is ea it is only ea residual so i a s c i a at the short circuit condition will be the ea residual divided by the rf so ea residual divided by the ra okay so that is a very small value of current that's why the current there is some finite current in the generator in the short circuit condition but it's not very high it is very low value in fact okay so it that is why the graph comes and touches here so i hope you have understood what i am trying to tell here there is two regions saturation region and the linear region in the saturation region the reduction of vt does not affect the reduction in ea much okay ea is not reducing much because ea is a dependent on flux and flux is almost constant in this particular area so that you don't have to consider the reduction in ea but once you come in the linear region any decrease in vt will significantly affect the value of flux and thereby ea and thereby two quantities continuously reduce and ia will fall down very sharply okay so 
now you have reached this point for example from now here from short circuit you are going to open circuit so from open circuit to short circuit you have come here what about you go from short circuit to open circuit here what would happen is that it would not take the same path it would take a slightly different path all right and finally it would come and meet in the open circuit car so why is this difference the difference is because due to the hysteresis in the machine the electrical machines all have hysteresis so it will never follow the same path it will take a different path so if somebody asks you what will be the return path you just shift a little bit and draw the same graph so i hope you have understood today's session uh the dc shunt generated terminal capacitors are a very interesting characteristics and the importance of learning all these things is that you will start thinking more and this thinking uh, habit will help you understand difficult concepts in a much faster way all right so if you think that this characteristic is a little bit confusing or difficult if you skip this you will skip every difficult concept after that but you take it as a challenge and you try to understand then even difficult concepts you will be able to understand in a much faster way and much intuitive intuitive way okay so that will be with this particular session so till now we have never talked about armature reaction for dc shunt generator load characteristic we have never talked about armature reaction okay we have only talked about iara drop in the next session let us start with the uh, analysis of the same uh, terminal characteristics with armature reaction okay it's a very small session after that we have to start with dc series motor and differential and compound motors and with that uh, dc machines will get concluded so i hope you have uh, liked today's session if you have liked the video please like share and subscribe the channel if you have any doubts put down in the comments below and i'll see you in the next video thank you